response to calls for nationalization of mines, of banks, land and wealth, the Freedom Market Fund, Free Market Foundation rather, in early 2011 compiled nationalization, which comprises several chapters dealing with various aspects of nationalization and where it's worked in the world, how it's been uh, instrumented and, and instituted. Vivian Atur is an economist at the Free Market Foundation. Vivian, let's separate the emotions from this, okay? Let's separate our politics and ideology. The thrust of what the ANC Youth League is saying is in a developmental state where the state is a creditor to a lot of uh, business institutions by issuing tenders, by being a client of many banking institutions, we should see capital being used productively. And if it's not being used productively for the broader development of society, then maybe we should consider ownership of these assets. That's, that's what underpins this particular uh, issue of nationalization. Where has it worked, nationalization? Examples that South Africa could emulate. Before I talk about examples that South Africa could emulate, I, I want to say that the, the, the question of development and especially of the black South Africans mm -hmm. coming from the apartheid past is not something that is debatable. Mm -hmm. It's something that must happen, taking mm -hmm. this nation forward. Yeah. But when we come to what is the solution, is what we have to be very critical, looking at is there anything we can do to help the majority who are black and poor to become where they want to be and realize their potential given the, the, the fact that they were deprived in the apartheid government. What is happening with nationalization is that it's not something new. Countries have started doing nationalization since the 18th century, and up till today, many more countries are practicing nationalization. Yeah. But what we have seen is that out of the 12 countries that have been selected by the ANC Youth League for studying and considering a model for South uh -huh. Africa, we, we saw a positive case like in Botswana where you have public private partnership, partnership and that is not actual nationalization because nationalization in the real context of it means that government is taking over businesses that have mm -hmm. been operated and owned by mm -hmm. private individuals or private corporations. Mm -hmm. In the case of China, it's another positive example there, but what we must be cautious about learning from China is the fact that China has never been a market economy mm -hmm. before. China comes from a communist past right. and they created free economic zones right. which has led to development. We'll pick out some examples uh, shortly. The basic gist is, you know, a midpoint to full state ownership is a system like royalty fees, which mining houses in South Africa would argue we already pay royalties. We already uh, pay our taxes on utilizing land for mining. But the issue is more needs to be done. What is that more beyond royalties? I think when, when we are looking at more needs to be done, first we need to unpack the ownership structure of the mines in South Africa and any other business majority of the black South Africans have taken ownership of many of these institutions indirectly and some of the papers and the media would not cover this because you have huge amount of assets and pension funds being invested in this in these institutions. Mm -hmm. And if they are taken from the rightful owners and given to the state, it means we're saying that ownership by individuals is the same like mm -hmm. ownership by the state. However, I agree that they, we might be looking further into the reality structures and seeing how this can be paid and right. raising funds for government to meet its other social demands like healthcare right. and education and other things. So I think the government should be looking at this. Going if you forward. looked at a major institution like the State Bank of India, which is actually a commercial bank, there was nationalization. There was the state coming in about 30 years ago saying we need to see capital being used more productively in the economy. We're coming in on a 30% uh, equity ownership. We're letting it be managed uh, independently by uh, very accomplished technocrats and bankers. But as a shareholder, we want to direct some of the priority investments of a bank. That almost works like the joint ventures we're seeing in the mines of Botswana where the government owns 50% and the private company owns 50%. It runs like a commercial entity, but government says this is how the profits should be used for the broader development of the community. Is that a good compromise? I think it's a good compromise for the government to invest in any sector in which it wants to invest. In South Africa, the government already has a bank, the Post Bank, and which we have seen not performing and meeting the desired objectives over the years, and we should be transformed or we should be, should be 
technocrats should be brought in to run this kind of an institutions, mm. or the government can in invest in the already four leading commercial banks if mm. it wants to. But the idea of government investing and managing is a failure, as we've seen with the post bank, mm. which means that it's not about where the government in invests, it's about the efficiency of an institution that can bring benefits so, so to the So there's no the problem citizens. in government taking a significant shareholding in a commercial entity, but they must just let it run privately. That's correct. Okay, let's talk about China, because that's a model that many people are looking to emulate, where we've really seen the state direct the engines of investment. A lot of major investments within the Chinese economy, uh, the acquisition of Chinese interests abroad have happened through state-funded vehicles. And to a large extent, some of the uh, commercial lending institutions in China have been largely state-owned as well. I think, like I mentioned at the beginning, China comes from a communist path. And what that means is that over the years in China, everything has been owned by the government. And when the government opened up to private investment in various sectors, the government made sure that these institutions would not be run by ideologues for political reasons. It would be run by technocrats. And the government came out with industrial zones, free industrial zones. That is a key machinery. In South Africa, we should be looking at creating industrial zones. Let's go to the townships. Let's make sure that there is, there is industrial zones and say, if you want to open a business in mm. Alexandra, if you want to open a business in Soweto, you're not going to pay taxes. You're not going mm. to have this kind of business constraints. Let's, let's un unpack the potential in these areas. Let's come out right. with these kind of policies. Let's talk about the social contracts we've seen in, com in countries like Norway and Singapore, where to a large extent everybody is working towards a national vision articulated by the state. Business is prepared to pay significant corporate taxes. There are people in countries like Norway who pay 90% of their earnings in the form of tax. When are we going to get to that kind of mentality, that kind of mutual commitment in South Africa? I think the problem with South Africa, it, it's not going to be a matter of choice. It's going to be a matter of necessity because we already seen a majority of our young people out of jobs and business and government and every individual or stakeholder concerned must come to the party and map the way forward. And the first thing we have to look at is not looking so much at the Norwegian example, but looking so much as building capacity first, because before Norway got where they were, they have capacity, they've advanced in technology, they've built this whole mentality of efficiency and mm -hmm. hard work, which is driving the economy now. So we can't, there are no shortcuts to this. We're going to follow the process and we can get there. In 10 seconds, Vivian, nationalization, yes or no, in South Africa? No. <laughs> Thanks for that, Vivian Attud. Okay. She's an economist at the Free Market Foundation.